Welcome to today's video guys. So this is hopefully going to be a series of short videos, uh, tech shorts, where I'm just going to spend a few minutes talking about different components for different rifles. So we're going to look at VSR triggers today. Let's start with a standard 45 degree trigger. So this is out of a Sima CM701. The differences are, so this here is your trigger sear, and as you can see, that goes off at a 45 angle like that. The piston itself will sit sear, so this is a 90 degree sear. So this bit here, this flat face here is the 90 degree sear, whereas this angle here is closer to what you'd find in a stock 45 setup. So on a 45, you've got two 45 degree angles mesh in here, and basically if I push this forward, when this is under tension, when you pull the trigger, the whole thing drops down. So that basically rubs against the piston as it goes down, that drops, then when you're cocking it again, the piston slides over, that pops up, and it catches. Now the problem with this is because of the way that this angle is going up, and the piston is the same angle, when they meet, essentially what happens is a lot of the time that piston will be pushing against the top of the cylinder and you'll just feel it great as you try and rack that bolt. Generally speaking, the 45 degree triggers out there are all really low quality. They're the cheapest cheap metal that you can possibly get. There are some companies out there that do make upgraded 45 degree triggers and there's a few companies out there that make upgraded 45 degree sears. But most modern upgraded pistons, whether it's mine or other companies, are going to be 90 degree. And the reason for that is it's a smoother bolt pull because of the way that those angles match and mesh together and keep everything central and a hell of a lot less wear and tear because you're just gripping onto so much more surface area than you are with the 45 and the brake is a lot smoother. So that's the, the 45. So I so said this is a, a VSR. All VSRs look as almost identical to this. There might be some colour changes, but essentially you've got spring guide stopper, sear, this, I don't know what you would call this, but basically this little bit here stops you putting the trigger if it isn't fully returned home. Um, it's actually a pain in the ass piece, so I would generally remove it. The idea behind it is when you rack the bolt, if your bolt's not fully returned home, this can't seat up. If it doesn't seat, if it isn't upright, then you can't pull the trigger. If it's down like that, it blocks the sear from moving. But actually a lot of the time this gets jammed and this doesn't mesh up with other cylinders. So I generally will take that out if I'm even sticking with a 45 degree trigger. On this one, you can adjust the stroke and the pull to a degree. But if you're playing at low joule limits, these are fine. Anything sub 1.3 joules, you can use it. Um, so something like a Simon CM701 out of the box. Just use it until something breaks, which will probably be the polymer piston. But then moving on, we have a 90 degree trigger. So this particular example, there's loads out there, but this particular example is a Springer Custom Works uh, V9.3, which is the newest one. Um, but to be fair, any of his versions are all really good. Obviously, massive quality difference between the two, but the actual difference in terms of the sear is at a 90 degree angle. So that's a flat face that matches perfectly with the flat face on the sear. And this sear, unlike the 45, and again, this does vary by trigger, doesn't just drop down. This actually flicks forward. So if I put pressure on it, pull the trigger, that goes forward. So the release is very different. So rather than this sitting there, this dropping down slowly, and then this pulling away from it, what actually happens is that sits there, and it just flicks out the way, and then returns back to the home position. This has a number of benefits. The first one is reduced wear and tear because you're grabbing so much more material on the sear. So when these are meshed, this is a poor example because this isn't a VSR sear. It's just the only thing I have to hand. But that grabs onto a hell of a lot more material there. So it reduces your wear and tear. Again, the sears on most 90 degree triggers are going to be some kind of steel 3334, three, three, something heavy duty anyway. And the way it drops means it's not grating against this. It's just clearing out the way. The other benefit is because of the way it's sat at a nice 90 degree angle, it's held in place there. There's no angle going this way wanting to push this up. So this, generally speaking, will sit a lot more central in the cylinder than a 45 degree setup would. And for that reason, it does make the bolt pull easier. And that's generally it. Things like the spring guide stoppers, which are these. So this is the spring guide stopper in the standard 45. 
this is the spring guide stopper in the spring custom works this one is actually held in place by a set screw here where you can see that yep so that stops that from moving uh, and stops it from dropping again quality wise these this is a stock cheap trigger but these don't really break that often like you've got to be running some really high power or using a really poor spring guide um, if you break one of these but again this is better materials the design on this one does mean that you can use this flat headed screwdriver to pop this out and you can remove the whole cylinder without having to take your whole trigger unit off with this one same sort of thing applies to a degree but on a spring custom at least you have to remove this screw and then generally what i will do is put a small allen key into the spring guide stopper from this side and then use that to pull this down because they do fit very snug but there you go if you are thinking about upgrading a vsr the 90 degree route is the route you want to go you can stick with the 45 there aren't a huge amount of 45 degree pistons out there upgrade wise you've got things like the maple leaf uh, and i think Leilax and action army both still do a 45 but for the most part every upgrade is going to stem from and go towards the 90 degree setup but hopefully that's enough information for you guys uh, i'll probably do a video on cylinders next but very quick summary of the benefits of each what the differences are again this is just what i use um, there are other 90 degree triggers out there but i've used these for a long time uh, not just in my vsr but anything that can take a spring custom works trigger i'll generally use i i pay for these i buy these uh, got these from empire airsoft so there's no paid promotion here i just i've always liked spring custom works and i just like his brand i like him i like what he does so i generally have used these because i've never had a failure 45 I won't use these. If I'm doing a one jewel build, I'll use it until it breaks, but I'll still probably end up getting a 90 degree. Any questions, guys? Drop it in the comments. I am fairly active on the comments, or I'm pretty active on Instagram. But again, this is my first sort of tech shorts video, so any feedback is always appreciated. Otherwise, guys, enjoy.